All right, gang, continuing on with our construction manager project here for the builders. So we've got all the images uploading and we've got most of the functionality here. So today we wanna to have a look at adding comments. So if we jump in here, you can see what we have. We have the project view. We can jump into a project. We can jump into sub projects. We've got the different spaces which we can manage. Each space has like an inspiration. Um, board here where we can upload photos we've got all our finishes and colors and then we've got our fixtures and fittings and equipment here so that's all good we've got little picture uploads we've got statuses all looking pretty cool but today uh, i want to add comments so let's jump in all right gang so continuing on with the construction manager project we're going to add some comments using a polymorphic table here so it joins to the models so to do this let us create a model. So we are going to need a comment model. So let's clear this. Let's run Rails G model and it's a comment. Hit enter. All right, let's jump into the project here. Let's close all this off. That's our login for getting in. Um, all right, DB migrate, create comment. Here we go. So this belongs to a owner so this will be a polymorphic table so we what that means is that we can have a comment belong to a project item it can belong to a project it can belong to a project section we don't have to create multiple joins tables here we can just use a polymorphic join so what that creates is a underscore type and an underscore id so if we said belongs to an owner so i usually use the terminology owner here Sometimes you would see like commentable, polymorphic true. So something is commentable. It is, you can comment on it. I find that sometimes a little bit uh, hard to always come up with a new word depending on the polymorphic join you want to do. So here I like to just run with owner. So a comment belongs to an owner. So an owner could be, so what, so the, firstly, what this is going to create is an owner. I'll just comment this here. It'll have an owner type and own ID. Right, so this would look like something like, in our instance, would be a project item. And then the ID would be the ID of the item, right? So three. And then Rails is able to look this up. So if we went to, say we said has many, on a project item we have has many comments as owner. Rails is clever enough to do that look up and look for all tables and join like that. This is very handy and it saves us creating a whole bunch of different tables and different joins. So if you followed any of the other videos when we're using Prisma, Prisma doesn't support polymorphic joins, so you end up having project items comments and a project spaces comments, projects comments. You just end up with a whole bunch of extra tables that we have to maintain. This just makes it really simple. Okay, so that's really all we need there. Then what we're gonna say belongs to user. Yeah, for sure. We also want to have a comment. So a comment has a body. So we can have t.text and that's the body. That's the body of the comment. And I think for now, we're also going to have timestamp. So when it was created, and I think that's all we really need right now. Okay. So I wonder actually the other thing that I think that we could probably have is a data column. So if we created a JSON B here and just had data, because what I want to do there is, you know, when we automatically create a comment, we can store extra additional metadata in that table there. All right, so once you've got that, let's jump back here and go Rails DB migrate and migrate that in and have a look here. Now have the comment. I just wanna also see if it's created indexes. So it's created an index on the owner there. So owner type and owner ID, which is great, and on the user ID, so that's awesome. So it does that all because we're using the belongs to. And here you can see our, our table. All right. So now let's jump in and connect these up. So we're going to go models, comment. And then this is going to be belongs. Same thing as the, uh, is in the migration. We're going to have belongs to owner, polymorphic true. All right. And we can also do, while we're here, um, project item. We can grab this validates. And what we're going to validate is the body and 
that's that's probably the main thing this is going to be validated as well because it's not optional okay so that's that and then what we need to do is in the project item we're going to say under here we're going to go has many comments as owner okay and that's all the setup we need now whenever we want to add comments to any other entity we can just add that line all right and that will do and rails will all do all the work and you've actually we've already seen this polymorphic join inside of the active storage attachments it uses record type and record id there so you could follow that naming convention record type record id and that that might not be a bad idea I mean, we could unwind and, and go back there, but for now, I'm just going to leave owner. I think a com the owner of a comment is is makes sense. I mean, you know what? Let's go with the convention. Let's just let's just do it. It's really easy. So let's just go Rails DB rollback, and I'll show you how we can do that. So all we need to do is in here it belongs to record, right? Now we can migrate that again. Okay, and let's just double check that it has done it. Index comments on record, so that's there. And now we have, we're matching record type, record ID there. And now we're gonna say belongs to record. Comment belongs to a record. And then it has many comments as record, right? This is now following the same convention as what Rails is, okay? All right, so now what we can do is we can go project item dot first dot comments we probably have to what are we doing here what's it looking for undefined method comments for pro project oh sorry I wrote project not project items if we change it to project item there we go so you can see what it's doing select comments from comments where comments dot record ID is the variable here, which is one, which is project item first, and comments dot record type is project item. All right, so it's as simple as that now to do the lookup. So that's great. So the next thing that we need to do here is actually be able to comment on these things. So this is going to be interesting because we probably want inline commenting here, not so you don't have to go into the edit piece, I need to run the server, so bin dev, okay, let's run that, there we go, so we don't want to have to come here to make a comment, um, I think that it's best to show here, uh, now my only other thing, yeah, I guess let's, let's see what that looks like, so let's try and add comments to here, so what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new folder here for comments and I'm going to go form.html.erb um, I want to create a comment partial so .html you know what I'm, I'm going to actually do before I waste all my time and everyone's time like this let's just scaffold this controller we don't need all of it but it's worth just doing here so we're going to go scaffold controller comment okay and that's just going to set up all the views and stuff so we don't have to manually do that and it's all going to be there all right so there we go we've got a form we've got our comment and the json etc etc all right so the first thing now a comment realistically we can probably have a comment at its own route because it is polymorphic so we don't want to have to show all of these things individually. I don't know, it has, oh, there it is. Let's just grab these. Um, so we don't actually need this one anymore. So let's chuck comments here. Uh, comments. Okay, so that'll have its own little route here. But realistically, we don't want to access all comments ever. Okay, so we might actually have to nest them in here. But what we can do, I think, what we want to do is something like this. So we want to.
get, and this will be, so it'll be owner type, like that. It's actually not owner type, so you have already, this is record type. So now what we have is basically project item slash three slash comments. And even that doesn't feel right because this should really be project items. All right. So let's see how we can make this. I might be overcomplicating it right now. So I think we could even just do this. And we can say comments like this. Now, the only thing is we also need to pass through what type of um, entity this is. So this is going to have items. It's not actually going to know that this is for a project item. So we just need to make sure we can fix that. And not an alternative as well, what we could do is we could just have get comments like that. And we don't actually want to go there. We can just say get comments because then it'll be items three slash comments. And that'll probably be what we want to do for showing an index. Okay. So maybe cut all this out. Let's try and figure out a better way of doing this. So let's set up the, the views for this now. So inside of app views, we got comments now, but that what we want to jump into is a project item. All right. So this is our project item here, but what we're going to do. So let's just figure out what's going on here. So we've got our grid. So I think under here, let's just chuck this in here. Comments. I'm just going to put that there for now. And then I'm also going to say BG, uh, what is it? BG top. So it's border to top. There we go. That's how we want that to look. I'm going to give it a P4 to match the top. All right. So if we have comments, we're going to list them in here. So now what we want to do is we want to create the comment partial. So let's have a look at this I'm a bit using spaces. What is Copilot trying to do here? Comment header, comment author, comment date. So we've got comment body. So this would be user dot don't have name we've got first name and last name don't need a link to that though so we can just say comment dot user dot first name put that in there and then last name We don't, this is weird that it's using these comp, these classes because we're using Tailwind. So that doesn't quite work. But anyway, let's just chuck that in there. And what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to add some comments. So let's reload. And let's go comment.create. And then we're going to say record is now let's add it to the top here so that we can just see it. So that's item seven. So this is project item dot find seven user is user dot first. We need body. Um, I really like this material. What are you saying? User. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Perfectly fine. So we need to define that in our model. So we haven't said it belongs to a user, right? So a comment has to belong to a user. That's perfectly, perfectly normal. Let's reload. There we go. We've got a comment now. 
I really like this material. And then what else can we say here? Maybe let's do a second comment. Um, what other colors are there, perhaps? What other colors are available? All right, let's create that. So now we've got two comments. So now what we can do is if we jump into the project item again, we can just go here and we can say, we're going to loop. And what I want to do is only if there are comments. So if project item dot comments dot size is greater than zero, then we're going to show this div. Otherwise, let's not, uh, actually, we need to show this div regardless because we do need to have an input box. So we need to show that always. So we're going to say here, we're going to go project item dot comments each do comment. What we also want to do here is make sure that we're set sorting them in the right order. So we want to go dot order um, created at and then we want to go descending and then what we're going to do here is we're going to render the partial locals alright and then this will be comments slash comment Okay, so there we go. We got our comments appearing. Um, now, what we need to do here is just make sure that we have flex coal on this guy. Chuck that down. Two minutes ago, that's cool. So we're getting that rendered out. Okay, what colors are available? I really like this material. Now, what I'm thinking is why the name is not coming in. So let's have a look user dot first name user dot last name which is interesting let me see what that is so if we go here to this comment comment dot user dot first name interesting oh we probably haven't even given him yeah we haven't given this guy a first name and last name sweet that makes sense so this is ken this is builder. Sweet, there we go. All right, so let's style these guys. So in the comment, we've got the header and the body. Now we also want to have, so we want to have a little picture. So I almost feel like we're going to go I mean, this, this comment class is probably don't need this either. So let's go here, class, and this is going to be flex, flex coal, because this whole thing is going to run down. Then on this side, we're going to have an image. So we're going to go div class equals, it's not going to really be an image, it's just going to be a little bit of color. So this is going to, let's just call this uh, user. I'm just going to put an O there. Well, you probably use the first letter of the person's name. W16, H16. It'll be a flex as well. It's going to be items center, justify center. Um, and then we're going to go BG gray. Let's see if that works. We also need round corner. So that didn't work quite. We need to go um, rounded. Let's see what that is. Round. Border radius. We need rounded full there. Background color. BG gray, okay, we've got to give it a color. Let's go BG gray 200. There we go. So that matches this size here, which may be too big. Let's go eight. Yeah, that'll be good enough, just for a little bit of color. 
Now, actually, we don't need flex coal because we need these to run side by side. These are flex coal. All right. And then we can say here, can we give a little gap? There we go. I'm loving this gap stuff. We don't need to use margins anymore. That's definitely something I learned from this project. Um, all right, so we got that. This, I like, so I'm looking at this guy here. So we've got the name and then the time. So if we move the name and then the time, that's what we have, name and time. Cool, that looks good. So we don't need, this is gonna be header. Do we need it like that? I mean, let's do that, but this is just a flex, flex, call again. Same as this. This will be text small. And then this will be text small as well. Oh, yep, text small. This will be text medium. And actually probably bold. We can we can gray this a little bit. Text gray. And that sits on the time. That's too little. Nine minutes ago. And then what I want to do here is give this bit of a gap. No, that's too much. One even extra small here. Make this small. So don't want these to be too hectic. And then in between these comments, so this is going to sit on this box. So this is where we want the gap here. Yep. And okay. I think that looks pretty cool. I think we can bold that. So what is bold and tailwind again, my friend? Font weight, font bold. Jump back into here, so text small font bold. That's it. Sweet. Okay. So let's set up this little, so what are we gonna do here? We're gonna basically just grab the comment user first name possibly let's use uh, yeah I mean let's let's go to users if they don't have a first name I mean realistic let's use the email because most emails will start with someone's first name so let's go um, we'll grab the first letter of the email so just in R Ruby in Rails C you can see here Ken dot first is K simple as that or we can use the index of the first letter there so this probably reads a bit nicer. So we're gonna say in here, we're going to go comment.user.email.first and see what that does. That should print us K. And then I wanna go um, upcase. There we go. So we'll have a K. And now we need a, a set of colors in here, right? So let's define those um, colors. Yeah, no. Um, let's do this. Let's get a random set of colors. Okay, so what I'm doing here is we're going to create an array of colors, which will be all the letters of the alphabet. We're grabbing the user letter, which is the comment user email first. So that's the first letter. And then we're going to get the bytes. And if you minus 96, it gives you the position in the alphabet. So if you have a look here, K dot bytes, first letter, minus 96, it's the 11th in there. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, 11. Good, checks out. 
So we need to actually create the, all the letters of the alphabet here in colors. So I will do that now. So I've added in 13 colors because I don't want to add every single one. We could just double this up for simplicity. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We just double that. Because it's 26. Last time I checked, there were 26. And yes, I did Google it. Um, so what we want to do here is we want to grab the user letter bytes. And instead of 96, I'm going to minus 97 because we want to be zero indexed. So technically, so we've got 26. That's index zero. And that's index 25, right? So the last letter of the alphabet, so A is zero and Z is 25, all right? So that should give us there and now the user color should be that. That's the index, user color index, sorry. And then user color equals so let's just call this hex colors. It's not random. Hex colors with user color index, all right? So now we've got this little guy and now we have to do our special little trick again with Tailwind. So we're gonna go style equals um, user color. like that and check that that loads should be in here so that's BFD BFE all right and then from there we can go into tailwind and we can say text and we can say pass this in here Okay, so that's the wrong thing. We actually need to use BG. There we go, we got some color. Now, can we check that I haven't made a mistake? If we change this first letter to an A, we get that. If we change it to a Z, there. If we change it to a G, there, cool. So we got some colors going on there. That was a lot of work, probably didn't need to be part of the MVP, but here we go. Sweet. All right, so we've got comments showing up now, which is cool. Um, and let's see, so it looks good all the way down to mobile. Excellent. All right, so the, the next piece now is actually adding the comment, so being able to create a comment against this. So let's give that a go. So what I'm thinking firstly, instead of using the general, I mean the comment form, the comment's always gonna have a parent. So we can use this form. So let's chuck this form straight inside of here. So we're gonna render all our comments. And then from here, we're gonna render out our partial, which is our form. So, from here, we're now going to say record is going to be the project item. Okay. So now we're coming in here. We also need to have a comment here, a form with comment. So what we can do here, actually, the comment will always be comment dot new with the record being the project item. That's even simpler, right? And then the user will be current user. All right, let's see what this does. So current user is not available. Let's have a look. Okay. We have just to expose that out to our view. Okay, so what I just did there is I just changed the user to using this singleton current.user, so that's fine. Now we get another error with the comments path, which is cool, We've, we're used to that. So that's because we are rendering 
comments path. So form with model comment. So we just have to fix that as well. Okay, so that's happening because we don't have this route set up in here. So let's go comments and we want to do resources comments only create and destroy. That's fine. Let's see if that fixes it. There we go. It does. All right, so now there's our form, but it's not very exciting. So let's set that up and have a look at what that can look like. So in here, we've got the errors, which is cool. That's fine. Um, and then in here, let's create the new div. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and borrow our fields from our project item. So let's go up here. We need the, no, that we don't need. Probably one of these. And this is body. Probably won't have a, a label because that looks a bit weird, but there's the comment body. But we can probably just say, probably don't need a label at all. All right, and this will be a text text field, yep. But we want to, oh no, it's not a text field, it's called a text area. Yep. Um, now, can we set the height here? We did it in project item for description. In the form. So it was down the bottom. didn't set the actual height there at all. Okay, that's fine. Sweet. So what do we want? We want this probably a little bit higher. And then the create button there. Now I'm wondering also like, do we want to show this everywhere? I mean, it's not awful right now. So we can just do that. And then we can just have a create comment button there. I guess this what we can do here is we can probably just set the placeholder. So let me just fix tidy this up. Let's see if placeholder works. Yep. Cool. That works for now. Um, okay, now we need our form submit button. So we need to just, let's see if we can grab this. So we look the same. Sweet. Where are we getting our margin from? Don't need that. Cool, and then we want to align this guy. So we're going to go class, flex, justify, end. There we go, create a comment. I think that looks all right. Sweet. Okay, so now what we need to do here is we need to do a couple of um, little, little, Sneaks, we need to add in the um, actual uh, record that we're going to create this for. So it's going to be a hidden field. So let's grab this. Right, we're going to chuck that in there. And then this is going to be called record ID. And this will be value.record.id. Because remember, we're passing this through as a... Um, local and then record type will be record dot type and let's just check that that actually works so if we go project it's class dot name that's what it is not type 
All right, let's have a look at what that does. Undefined variable. So comments form. You should you should be getting that. Oh no, I'm not even passing the record in. Okay, we've already defined that, so we don't actually need that. Sorry, my my mistake. All right, so if we hit create, no, that's good. Forbidden attributes, that's fine, totally. So we need to permit this. So we've got body, we've got user ID, we've also got record ID and record type. Cool. So we definitely don't want to throw back to here. Um, I reckon we might have to pass in because this is chucking us back to this random area, which is just absolute nonsense. Project item path. What's going on here? So this, this needs to th create the comment and if it fails it needs to send us back to this path all right so to what i'm doing here is i'm setting a hidden field and i'm saying redirect error path to request path because i want any error to come back to this this path here so let's add so from here in the comments controller on create if there's an error don't want to go to new. I want to redirect to params redirect error path. Now, is that nested? It is. So it's going to be comment comment. It's going to be nested like that. Like that. Okay, let's give that a spin. Yes, yeah, so it looks like, are we redirecting? We are redirecting. I wonder if we can just render. I think that's what the best we're going to be able to do right now. We're not getting the errors though, which is a bit annoying because we're doing a redirect. But that's fine for now because I actually, I think that's probably because it, uh, it is polymorphic, it's just a little bit harder to get it back here to the right spot. Cool. So that, that'll work. So if we just go here, test. Where does it save go? So I don't actually want update on comments ever. And then let's see. So if it's successful, we're going to go to the comment URL. That's not where we want to go to. So the same thing we want to do redirect success path. I'm going to create that. And that'll be the same path here. Now I'm wondering if we even just go redirect path because they're going to be the, exactly the same. Okay. So if we now refresh this, leave it blank, nothing. If we do this, test. Now let's just see what happened there. What have we done? Okay, so it's not working because when we initialize these, it's actually not getting passed through. So we can, we need to actually send them up. So what we had before was right. 
So we're going to say record ID and record type. And this will be comment dot um, record type and comment dot record ID. And let's see if that's set properly. Check here, we can see it in the hidden. Down here, project item and the record ID. is empty, which isn't right. Ah, record ID. There we go. That'll do it. Record ID seven. Yep, project item. Cool. And then we want to do the current user. So we actually don't need to worry about this here. That's just literally that. And then when we create, we're just going to set here comment dot user. Yeah. Now if we hit test, what are we getting? We're sending up body record ID and record type are empty. That's weird. Okay, that isn't weird. That's because I deleted it like a dongus. Get rid of user. That'll do it. There we go. Done. Sweet. A little bit of fumbling there, but that works in the end. And that was all my fault. So here you can see, Ken, I really like this. What are the materials of the variable test? Realistically, we probably want comments to pop straight here. Um, it just will feel more natural. So let's do create it at ascending. And as you create a comment, it just pops here. So you don't lose where you are. So ah, so there's the flash message there. Okay, that's interesting. Now, because we're not using JavaScript or anything, this is a proper full reload. Um, but there are definitely solutions in Rails to make this work, but I'm, it's a bit outside of my scope now. I just want to get something out. So that's looking really cool. All right, so now we can add comments. That's really very cool. Let's see if we can uh, improve on that. All right, another very simple thing to do in rails all right so what we're going to use here i've done literally nothing except i've created a div around our comments and i've given it an id because we have multiple of these on the screen so it's the class name of the project item hyphen the project item id hyphen comments that's the id right and i've just wrapped that in a flex. Now, what I've done in the controller is I've created this format.turbo stream. And what this does is it's going to render a new turbo stream and it's going to append to the same ID. It's going to look for that ID. Then it's going to use the partial, the comments partial. So we've written no new. Um, JavaScript or anything, it's just literally using the same HTML and then we're going to pass in the comment as a local. Now what we get is if you have a look here, this is a new comment, it just comes straight in. There's no page refresh, that's all happening on in the background using JavaScript, but what it's doing is it's actually just rendering HTML like this, a turbo stream template and then Rails is doing all the magic in the background for us. So we don't have to worry about doing anything. We don't have to find certain IDs and then in, um, add those things in. It just does it. So that's very powerful and very cool. That's the first time I've ever used Turbo Streams and it's super easy to add little pieces of JavaScript without having to write any JavaScript. 
So that's really cool. So now we can um, now we can leave comments. Just like that. There's a mistake there. Um, probably just need to fix that styling, but that seems to work okay. Awesome. So now we have full com comment functionality. All right, that's all we needed to achieve today. Um, so next up, what is next up? We have full comment editing. We've got this inspo. Next up, I want to add in invoices and quotes, I believe. I think this part is pretty much... Oh, actually, before we go. So what I want to do here just quickly is when we edit this, I need to fix that now for some reason. We've broken this. Um, when we edit this, what we want to do here is actually first fix it. And then secondly, we want to make sure that when we change something here, we add a comment here and it says Ken um, updated this and put in all the things we updated. Yep, I know why that's broken because I removed a route. So remember in the beginning of the session, I actually removed project items. So I'm just going to add that back in. It's just for simplicity's sake. I'm just going to have that create update for now here because that's for the form. There we go. All right, we're back on. Um, all right, so when we do something in here, I want to save this. So what I'm going to do is close all this down. All right. And then inside of our project item, when we update, now we might do this in the model. So let's use a callback in the model. So if we go into project item, so we're going to say after commit, we're going to say add changes comment. Okay? Yeah, on update. Only on update. We don't want this to run um, on creation because you're creating the thing. Now, what we want to do here is we want to have if saves changes. Yep. All right. So what we want we don't want to do is update it at or create it at status ID. We probably well, we do want to keep that. So let's get that and update it at updated by ID. We don't have that. That's not a real thing. Okay. So save changes in Rails. So Rails save changes. It's part of the dirty API here. And then it'll, it'll actually say, so saved changes. You can see here, it, it's a Boolean, it returns a Boolean. If we've made changes to this model, it's gonna return. So if you're just making no change in here, then save this one fire. And then it's save changes is this thing here. And it returns a hash of all the changes that were just saved. So before we do anything here, let's just log this out. Okay, just so we can see what it actually does. So I'll pull up Rails console. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, I'm going to change this to uh, black. I'm going to say is... Um, Special black concrete. Hit update. All right. Now let's have a look here. You can see what happened. So you can see here we've got description and it's in an array. And it says that's what the value was before and that's what the value is now. Color was gray and now it's black. This is very handy for tracking activity and changes. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we need to think of a way, like how can we, how can we write this? It's going to be something like Ken made updated. And then realistically, we want to say like each keyword. So you want to say description from to something else. And then maybe just do commas like this. Yeah. Or we can just say Ken made the following changes. And then we can just do something like that, yeah? 
So what we what we do we need to do here? So let's grab this changes object, and then let's put it into rail C. So we're going to go changes equals this. So now we're going to say changes dot map change. Um, so we actually we need the key as well. So let's just put this here because I think we're not going to get everything we need. So the first thing we want to do is actually get the keys. And I'm sure there's going to be a more bit or a more beautiful way of doing this, but this will work for me. Changes keys. So these are the keys that were changed. This changed. All right, and then we can use the key to find the actual changes. So let's go and say here the change string. So it's going to start off with um, the user. So it's going to be um, self dot user dot first name made the following changes. So I don't know what it's done there. All right, that's the changes string. And then we're going to have changes keys. Uh, let's see if we can do the key value. That would be even better. Changes dot each key value. So let's say changes dot each key value. Yep, so we can actually just do that. That's even better. So we can say mapped changes equals changes dot map. And I wonder if we can use an accumulator here. So we can do a changes dot reduce. Uh, maybe let's just do it this way first. Let's do this. And then we're going to say, now we might use a reduce function here. Let's see if we can. I might see if we can use, let's go change keys. And then we're going to go here, changes string is equal to changes keys dot map. And then we've got the accumulator. And then we're going to say return accumulator down here. And it's going to be accumulator plus equals. It's not this, it's reduce. So we've got the accumulator, we've got the key, changes key zero, changes key one, accumulator, and then this we should put here, let's put changes string here. Now I think we're going to have missing a comma. So we're going to probably have to get reduced with an index so we can find that out. So what I've done here, is I've set up the changes string, which is current user dot first name, made the following changes, colon, then a new line. And then from here, we've got the changes keys. So realistically, I can use this variable twice here, get rid of that. And then we've got a changes string, which is using keys, each with index, and then reducing, we're using this as the starting accumulator. And then we're getting the accumulator, the key, and the index. So the key would be something like uh, material, etc. And then we're grading the changes key. So that's the initial value, and that's the new value. And then we're looping, through, we're adding a new line if the index is less than the length. So for the last line, we don't want to do that. And then we're returning the accumulator. And then from here, I want to now create this comment. So I'm going to go create a new comment record self changes is going to be not this it's going to be called body is this and then the user okay is current dot user there we go so that's what we're going to do here now let's give this a spin so let's change this from concrete to um, we're going to go finish we're going to change this to 
black. And then we're going to go update. Now let's see. Here we go. Builder made the following changes. Color gray to black. Cool. So now we have a little change log there. So it also makes it easier to see if people are making, you know, changes through here. What we want to do here though is we want to preserve white space. So let's just see here if we can go white space, white space, and we want to go preserve, preserve wrap. Let's go into our view and we want that on our body. And then we go here. What is going on here? That's not right. That's because this is... I don't understand why there's always a new line here. I wonder if this has got to do with this. Yeah. And there we go. So now that sits on a new line. So Builder made the following changes, color there. Okay, sweet. So we are fully functioning now with comments. We can create them, it pops in here. When we make changes, it also adds these comments in. So that brings us to the end of that video. Next time we're gonna be adding invoices and quotes and managing this. I think this is starting to come together really nicely. So catch you on the next one.